In this bulletin, new member of parliament Mikaleo were to be sworn in next week. Work continues to save Ronnie Botabe in Lami. And government rehabilitation team to Vanua to return home. Good evening, I'm Akosita Tale and this is FBC News. New Member of Parliament Mika Lewere will be sworn into Parliament during its sitting next week. Lewere takes up the seat left vacant by opposition MP Ratu Vilia Metanivetawa. Parliament Secretary General Vinia Nanamusimalua told FBC News Lewere's swearing in has already been gazetted. A meeting of the business committee yesterday decided that Lewere be sworn in in the next Parliament sitting scheduled from Monday. When contacted today, Lewere stated he is waiting for Sodelpa leader Rote Mumukepa to inform him about the swearing in. The fight to save Ndroni Bota Bay outside Lamy continues. The Bay of Islands Preservation Group, consisting of some concerned residents, have appealed to the Minister of Local Government, Housing and Environment, Praveen Kumar, to immediately stop the rezoning of a residential piece of land in Waimbola, Wailekutu, Lamy. Shanal Sivan with this report. A public notice in the Fiji Sun on April 17th carried the approval of the Director of Department of Town and Country Planning to convert this piece of land from industrial to commercial sea for heavy industrial and car park purposes. It is our right to fight against this because it's actually, it's actually a residential area. Mm. And um, you do, if, if, the, if someone comes and decides to build a factory right next to your house, what would you do? You'd fight against it yeah. because that's your zone. That's where you live. That's where your children play. Uh, that's, where, that's where the future of your children will be, you know? And... Um, the last thing you want is uh, for, uh, for the industry to move in. Kaloni Singer says they are concerned if a heavy industrial area is developed amongst the vegetation in years to come, emissions from the industries will destroy the ecosystem. We, we do believe in development. Do not get us wrong. We believe we, we, we are welcome development. But there's a, we also believe that there is a place for that. You do not bring industry into where people live yeah. you take it somewhere else you know if the government could maybe allocate somewhere away from residents mm -hmm. from uh, residential areas the group has written a letter of appeal against the approval to the minister with a petition of more than 550 signatures from residents when contacted the minister Pravin Kumar says the group has the right to appeal but he has not seen the appeal letter and the petition I would like to ask uh, the honorable minister uh, to please uh, take a look at our appeal letter and um, come and have a look, walk around the place, the area. Uh, I'm sure you've uh, you visited the place, uh, Mr. Mr. Parveen Kumar. Uh, but um, if you get to look at it from our point of view, and uh, please uh, help us in this fight. This is the piece of land where the supposed uh, industrial area will begin uh, to emerge and the residents say this needs to stop for their future generations. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. The health ministry is trying to determine if the new mosquito-borne chikungunya virus is circulating in the country. This comes after the ministry received three cases of chikungunya in the past month. Following the confirmation of three imported cases of chikungunya, the health ministry is trying to find out from both public and private hospitals if there are more cases. One of the carriers of the virus was a foreigner who has since returned to his country while the two remaining carriers are locals. The notification of, uh, of uh, uh, cases from uh, the private sector, the private health sector, and uh, these have been uh, clinical cases or presumed cases of uh, uh, chikungunya. Uh, the bottom line is that um, to uh, differentiate chikungunya from uh, dengue fever uh, and, and other uh, mosquito-borne uh, viruses uh, because all the symptoms are almost the same. Although the ministry continues to receive clinical or presumed cases of chikungunya, a laboratory diagnostic test needs to be conducted to differentiate it from dengue fever. We have the test in country, but then we will have to... Uh, validate this test or confirm it. Eh? Uh, so this test uh, that we have in country will ascertain or diagnose the condition <coughs> uh, with samples that are sent 95% uh, of the time, eh? but then we'd, we'd like the 100% uh, you know, margin. 
Uh, so, so that's why we uh, send uh, these samples across to uh, our reference lab. Ministry of Health staff have been trained to fully understand the new virus and how to treat it. All, all our health workers are sensitized uh, to data. There's been training that has been undertaken by the ministry for them to be fully capacitated to understand the disease uh, and also to be able to diagnose it when people present it. The symptoms of chikungunya virus disease begins three to seven days after being bitten by infected mosquitoes and includes high fever, joint pains with swelling and stiffness, headache, muscle pains, fatigue and rash on the trunk and limbs. Most will recover within a week, although joint pains may persist for months or years in some cases. The Fijian response team has returned home after spending about a month carrying out rehabilitation work in Vanuatu. Soldiers, medics and government officials were part of the team sent by the government to assist in post-cyclone PAM rehabilitation work. Christopher Chan reports. Returning home after an extended stay in Vanuatu, these personnel have earned praise for their rehabilitation work and assistance. Perhaps the first of such deployment, we are doing well in the areas of peacekeeping, international peacekeeping, and perhaps this is the first uh, in terms of uh, human ass uh, humanitarian assistance and uh, relief assistance, uh, and this will go down in, in, the, in the history books uh, of our beloved nation. And uh, I want you to be proud uh, of uh, being a member of the Fiji response team. The relief team was led by Commissioner Western Manasa Tangi Dakimbao and consisted of Fiji military engineers, doctors and nurses. And we hear from the, the community themselves you know, telling us, uh, even if you don't bring anything, even if you don't rebuild anything, you know, your mere presence here in Vanuatu during this uh, time of uh, stress and uh, time of crisis, to stand and live amongst, you know, beside them, to them, it's, uh, it's a very welcoming uh, gesture and part of Fiji. The 55-member team was scheduled to arrive on Wednesday, but the Royal New Zealand Air Force plane could not land in Port Villa due to bad weather delaying their arrival to yesterday. Some of the work they did included rebuilding classrooms and even delivering babies. The work that we have done in Vanuatu, you know, we continue um, towards the end of our mission. We continue to receive accolades from uh, the cross-section of uh, Vanuatu community, yeah, from government, uh, Prime Minister himself, the ministers, the communities. Yeah. Now they kind of showed their deep appreciation and gratitude. This is the first time Fiji has sent a relief team to assist a country following the natural disaster. Their contributions was also recognized by Vanuatu Prime Minister Joe Natumen, who says the Fijians worked very closely with the National Disaster Management Office in Port Vila. Christopher Chand, FBC News. The Fijian's elections office is in the initial stages of planning and drawing up the 2018 general elections calendar. At the regional workshop that ended yesterday, staff were able to share the experiences of preparing for the 2014 general election as well as learn new skills. Ritika Pratap reports. A two-day workshop for staff of the elections office in Fiji and other Pacific Island countries saw experiences being shared about the planning and the preparation of general elections. The outcome would help them contribute towards drawing up a strategic plan. It actually will give us a, a better, uh, better idea as to how we should go about doing it and how each activity needs to be undertaken so that it's all, it all fits into one so and, and the election is delivered as a project, yes. The supervisor of elections and his staff had less than seven months to prepare the country for the 2014 election. Mohammed Sanim says one of the challenges was voter awareness programs. Certainly we will be looking at uh, in enhancing the voter awareness strategies for the next election and coming up with uh, something more unique, uh, something that is eye-catching. And as we are all aware, it's a voluntary system of voting, so the FEO will now work with all the communities to ensure that there is in continuing interest in participating in electoral processes. 20 Fijian election office staff and five regional participants took part in the workshop. Mareta Katu, a part-time electoral official from Cook Islands, says she is inspired by Fiji's counting system. How it's been calculated, how they counted, it's much different with the system here in Fiji. So it will be something new that we will take into consideration in trying to use that back home in the Cook Islands.
A similar workshop will be held next week for 20 regional electoral administrators and five staff from the Fijian Elections Office. Kritika Pratap, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, Lambasa Sugar Mill ready for new crushing season. So what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, Because I am fast and slick and plus I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumunaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3pm to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> Welcome back, this is FBC News. Motorists are warned to be patient and considerate in light of upgrading works along the Votolevu Nasoso stretch of road in Nandi. Traffic officers in the Western Division have been inundated with calls from Fiji Roads Authority and Higgins Fiji officials about the reckless behavior of some drivers who continue to disregard warnings to drive slowly because of the road upgrading works. Reports of workers being verbally abused have also been received by police. The Fiji Police Force says commuters need to plan their travel in advance as roadworks cannot be completed overnight. Motorists are to expect traffic congestion, particularly during morning and afternoon rush hours. The Lambasa Sugar Mill will be the first to start the 2015 crushing season. The Fiji Sugar Corporation is anticipating this crushing season to be a good one. Eleanor Turangeview reports. The Lambasa Sugar Mill was once well known for the constant breakdown of its machines during the crushing season. For about three years now, it's changed and the FSC intends to keep it that way. Uh, we had a few uh, major problems. Uh, there was uh, political issues, instability. There was um, leasing uh, problems. Uh, there was low cane prices uh, and coupled with the uh, lot of bad performance in the in the factory people were running away from the sugar industry uh, and that we've changed around in just the last three three years or so due to the improved performance farmers are now more confident of the mill with the new crushing season to start soon we had to make sure that we become more efficient in the mill uh, and that we have proven uh, to some extent uh, the mill is uh, not breaking down as much as uh, you know used to happen before. The uh, stakeholders are quite happy with the performance, particularly in the last two years. Uh, and those uh, and the cane price has been the highest ever in the last uh, two years. Uh, FSC will also work on improving the tons of cane per tons of sugar for the mill. Tons of sugar depends on uh, tons of cane that we receive. Uh, and the efficiency of the, the sugar mill um, depends on the sweetness of cane, uh, depends on the weather. Uh, but we're looking at uh, a good crop this year. We're looking at about 600,000, uh, and that's good. Um, we're looking at about 90 CTS, which is nine tons of cane to make one ton of sugar from 600,000 tons of cane. Crushing at the Lambasa mill is expected to start in mid-June, while the other three mills will follow from the end of June and early July. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has signed an agreement with the Fiji Performing Rights Association to legally broadcast works under the FIPRA EPRA repertoire. The church's communications director, Joe Talemai Tonga, says they will broadcast locally produced religious programs. What is Sonny Rekanroka reports. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Fiji operates Hope Radio and Television from its headquarters in Subabu, Lami. The signing of the agreement with the Fiji Performing Rights Association is a milestone for the church. We have decided as a church to follow the right procedure and to be responsible in ensuring that all copyright laws that uh, is expected of any media organization in Fiji is adhered to. And that's why we have sought advice from the Fiji Performance Rights Association and they have provided for us 
very good counsel. Talmay Tong also thanked the government for giving the green light for a license to operate the radio and television station. FIPRA Board Chairman Eramasi Tamanisau Jr. says other organizations should be encouraged by what the SDA Church has done. Channel and uh, Pope uh, FM 107 have now become the first Christian stations to be licensed by FIPRA. FIPRA is hoping other faith-based organizations operating radio stations will take their cue and sign up with the association. What is only Rican Roca, FBC News. 189 new flag designs has been received by the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation in the Design the New National Flag competition. Of those entries, the panel of judges at FBC shortlisted 16 designs. Of those 16, two have now been chosen by the company, which it thinks should be the right design needed for the new flag. Only one of the designs will then be chosen and forwarded to government as the companies speak. FBC Flag Design Committee member Pedeli Rokotuivuna says the competition was another way. The company would help generate interest from the public. The reason behind it was to just showcase one people's appreciation and people's, uh, the Fijians, uh, new look at what they thought that the Fiji of the future should look like. And in fact, it's representation and the symbols that should represent our country. All the flag entries have been submitted to government's National Flag Committee. At 6.30 p.m. tomorrow, you can see some designs that made it to the top, as well as interviews with the flag designers. A lot of interest was generated from the public as many turned up at the Fiji Broadcasting House today to audition for the one. Many came from as far as Lambasa and the Western Division for a place at the Broadcasting House to be a face on television. More than 100 videos have been submitted showcasing raw Fijian talent. FBC is looking for entertainers, TV hosts, news and sports presenters and weather personalities. Uh, this audition is to uh, find talent uh, that is out there, that, that, that people who are able to host a TV program or, or do anything presentation, hosting, anything to do with television. So basically that, that, that is what we're trying to find here. And then the people we find in, in these auditions, basically if, if they are good enough that they are selected or shortlisted, uh, you could see them on, on, on TV basically presenting news or any other programs. Coming up on FBC Sports, Fiji team ready for Glasgow Sevens. Bar under 15 win Fiji fact title. Welcome back. Leading our sports tonight, Vodafone Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan has stressed to his players to remain focused at all times during the Glasgow 7's in Scotland this weekend. Ryan says all too often in the past, Fiji has been let down by the most basic of errors at the most crucial of times. And it just comes down to, I tell the boys, concentrating on whistle to whistle. You know, when the referee blows the whistle, all you care about is, is what's going on until he blows the whistle again to stop the, a piece of play. And up until that point, nothing matters apart from that segment of play. If we just focus like that and we concentrate like that for two, two tournaments, then we'll be fine. The national side will have the opportunity to take on the lead on the World 7 Series points table as well as qualify for the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. Fiji will take on Wales in its opening pool match of the Glasgow 7s at 11.42 p.m. tonight before playing Portugal at 2.48 a.m. tomorrow and host Scotland at 6.21 a.m. in the morning. You can watch the Glasgow 7s live on FBC TV from 9.30 p.m. tonight. The Lambasa football side will feature in the final of the Vodafone Fiji Fact after the side defeated Lautoka 3-2 in the first semi-final. Lautoka gave away a 2-0 lead as Lambasa came back with three unanswered goals for the victory. Here are the goals. Dungudangi looking to get the header. Back to Penny Finau. Finau comes in with the shot. And Penny Finau in the ninth minute.
minute of play has put Lautoka, shop and save Lautoka, he stooped low and with an in-step attempt that uh, Lambasa was not able to clear. Into more into Lautoka as Lautoka come with a counter-attack. 19 minutes gone, Penifi now a chip kick and on for Tony Bono! And Tony Bono in the 19th minute of play. On the, north, on the western soil for Lambasa continues, seems like it will continue. Continues at this stage and they have pulled one back. Robin S. Curran, well, too early to talk. The corner kick from the far touchline side, a deep one it is to punch the way. And the header, as it tipped away the header, missed time by Bokini. But again, Lambasa don't have the numbers and Lotoka heading it back. And they can do so, Lambasa. Osiano Calisito. Osiano Calisito in the 46th minute of play. As the second semi final between Ba and Rewa is currently underway. The Ba side took out the under-15 division title at the tournament with a 2-1 win in the final against Navua. The junior men in black competed in the tournament for the first time and proved better than the Navua team who had to settle for second best for two years in a row. Rewa had won the title last year. Meanwhile, the final of the main competition will be played at 3 p.m. tomorrow. The Vodafone Fiji Under-20 football team celebrated Mother's Day at the Fiji Football Academy in Suva today. It was a jovial day for many parents as they farewelled their sons in style to the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. Rohit Del joined in the celebrations at the Fiji FA House. It was a farewell that every player would want to have. Under-20 soccer boys celebrating Mother's Day before leaving our shores. Rep Sola Wanga's mom travelled all the way from Ba to be part of the event. Uh, for me today, it's a very special day, a very special Mother's Day because uh, he's away from home and uh, being part of them here and uh, as they are here with us, the mothers, I would uh, especially thank the Fiji football for giving them this opportunity to celebrate Mother's Day with us. Satareki Hughes lost his mom last month but his dad was present today for his son. Uh, like it'll be a remembrance uh, for his mom not to be uh, not uh, being available in the World Cup because uh, she was ready to be there to watch him play on the field. So I told him to do all his best and the boys uh, as a remembrance for the mom. The soft-spoken midfielder did miss his mom but was happy to celebrate with other mothers. I'm uh, really missing my mom right now, uh, but I'm thankful to all the parents of the boys who are here supporting us uh, today so all the to all the mothers here yeah, so I'm uh, thankful to and I'm very happy th for their support uh, for this Mother's Day so I'm feeling good uh, with them here right now. The side plays two warm-up matches in Australia before departing for New Zealand for the World Cup. A special day indeed for the under-20 boys. They've already made their mums proud by qualifying for the World Cup. But what a special Mother's Day gift it would be if they do the nation proud at the upcoming World Cup. Rohit Deo, NBC Sports. The third Korean Ambassadors Cup Taekwondo Championship is being held at the USP Gymnasium. Since its beginning in 2013, the championship has been appreciated with its contribution made toward nurturing Taekwondo talents in Fiji. Currently, Fiji Taekwondo Association conducts Taekwondo training for the members of the RFMF to strengthen and improve Taekwondo skills. This championship is also a useful opportunity for Taekwondo practitioners to gain the competition experience for the upcoming Pacific Games. Fine weather apart from brief showers was experienced of the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. A trough of low pressure lies over Vanuatu, meanwhile another trough lies over Samoa and extends southeastwards over northern Cooks. Meanwhile abroad, easterly trade flow affect most of the southwest Pacific countries. Suven so Savo recorded the lowest temperatures for the day at 29 degrees. Ba and Lambasa are, the, are at the highest with 32 degrees. Tomorrow there will be brief showers of the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. Further outlook brief showers of the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. There will be isolated afternoon or evening showers. And recapping our top stories, new member of parliament Mika Lewere to be sworn in to parliament next week. Waimbala residents appeal for Minister for Environment to stop the rezoning of the land and government response team to Vanuatu return home. And now to our poll question. 
Do we have an accurate picture of the crime rate? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensize at fbc.com.fj or share with us via Facebook page FBC News or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's all from us tonight. See you again tomorrow. Good night.